Our God is the victor. Yes, our God is the victor. He's the victor over all the enemy. Yes, he's the victor over all the enemy. They said, where's your God? Yes, they said, where's your God? Your God cannot overcome me, they said. Oh, where's your God? They said, well, God sent one angel. Yes, my God sent one angel. Yes, my God sent one angel and destroyed all of them. Hallelujah. You know, I was talking to the Lord yesterday, and I was just asking Him. I said, Lord, how long? How long, Lord? How long? How long till you take care of this, Lord? I was asking Him about some stuff, you know. How long, Lord? And you know, I opened the Word of God, the Holy Word of God. And I had underlined these two verses in Second Chronicles 32, 7 and 8. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, that's the enemy, nor for all the multitude that is with him, nor for all his little minions or who he uses. But there be more with us than with them. Verse 8. With him, with the enemy, is the arm of the flesh. But with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. Hallelujah. The Lord our God, the creator of heaven and earth, the one that gave breath to every living thing on this earth and the one that can take the breath away from every living thing on this earth. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Now I want to go back up here, and we're just going to set this a little bit up, beginning from the beginning. Second Chronicles 32.1 After these things and the establishment thereof, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came. Now, this king of Assyria represents the enemy, Assyria, the enemy. Keep that in mind. He came and he entered into Judah and encamped against the fenced cities and thought to win them for himself. So this guy, being used of the devil, thought he could come in to the camp of the Lord and take it over for his own uh, purposes and his own will, doing what he will with the things of God and God's people. And he honestly thought he could win, too. But I'm going to tell you what happened, okay? Second verse, and when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come, and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem, he took counsel with his princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the fountains which were without the city, and they did help him. Okay, so King Hezekiah saw that the enemy was coming, and he prepared. He began to shut off the waters outside of the city so that they could not partake of that shut them down in any way possible and he started preparing so there was gathered much people together who stopped all the fountains and the brook that ran through the midst of the land 
saying, Why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? Verse 5. Also he strengthened himself. Hezekiah got busy and got prepared, didn't he? And he strengthened himself. And he built up all the wall that was broken, and he raised it up to the towers, and another wall without, and he repaired Milo in the city of David, and made darts and shields in abundance. And he set captains of war over the people, and he gathered them together to him in the street of the gate of the city, and spake comfortably to them. Okay, he's getting ready, right? He's getting ready for these enemies that think they're going to come in and take over. And he's preparing as God is showing him to prepare. And that's exactly what we have to do in this day and hour. This is an example for us today. Because there's enemies on every side. Enemies coming within and without. And we have to prepare. We have to do what the Lord tells us to do in preparation. Okay, verse 6. Oh no, verse 7. Be strong, he talks to the people. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with them. For there be more with us than with him. With him is the arm of the flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. And that's the same with us today. We have our God. Hey, our God. The God of the universe fighting our battles. And the enemy's not going to win. I'm going to show you what happened. See, the enemy was coming in all prideful saying, you know, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to take over. I'm just going to run over these people, take them over, and all this kind of stuff. Well, I'm going to show you what happened. I think God takes the challenge when people do this, when his enemies do this, although he gives his enemies chance after chance after chance to turn, chance after chance after chance to repent. But then if they go on bull moose against him and against his people, God takes care of it. And it don't take much for him to do it either. But he's long-suffering. He gives him a lot of time. But then when the time comes, there is a cutoff date. There is a cutoff time in God's book. And he shows it over and over in the Bible. Okay, verse 8. With him is, is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us. Now you keep that in mind, you child of God. With us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. After this did Sinna Cherub, king of Assyria, the enemy, sent his service servants to Jerusalem. But he himself laid siege against Lachish and all his power with him. He sent his servants to Jerusalem unto Hezekiah, king of Judah, and unto all Judah that were at Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith Sennacherib, king of Assyria, Whereon do ye trust that ye abide in the siege in Jerusalem? Now see right here, right off the bat, the enemy is trying to put doubt in these people's mind about Hezekiah, their leader. Trying to put doubt in their mind about his wisdom and what he's doing and what his purpose is and everything else. Trying to put uh, doubt and lies in their mind that he's out uh, for their harm instead of their good. That, the same thing that's happening today. This is like an example to us. Every part of this word of God is an example. And Jesus says so. Example. Okay, here he goes. Here he goes. 
Doth not Hezekiah persuade you to give over yourselves to die by famine and by thirst, saying, The Lord our God shall deliver us out of the hand of the king of Syria? Not only was he putting doubt on the messenger, Hezekiah, the leader, Hezekiah, but also on God. The fact that God would deliver them out of this wicked enemy's hand. Verse 12, Hath not the same Hezekiah taken away his high places and his altars and commanded Judah and Jerusalem, saying, Ye shall worship before one altar and burn incense upon it. See, already he's trying to throw all this stuff to make the people doubt Hezekiah and doubt Hezekiah's word and doubt God. Same thing that's happening today. Okay, here we go. Here we go. The pride of the enemy. The pride of the enemy thinking that he's going to overthrow God. That he's going to overthrow the Almighty God. Well, you know what? Once again, I think God takes that challenge when he hears that. I can just see him up in heaven saying, Really? Really? Well, let me just show you. You know, you've just been so wicked. You just continued in your wickedness. You just will not turn from your wickedness. You just keep on against me and against my people. And you just will not turn and you just will not repent. All the warnings I've given you and all the, the extension of the hands and mercy that I've given you. And you still will not turn and you still will not repent. Here he goes again. Who was there among all the gods of those nations that my fathers utterly destroyed that could deliver his people out of my hand? That your God should be able to deliver you out of my hand? He's mocking the fact that God will deliver his people out of the hand of this wicked enemy and that's the same for today isn't it the enemy goes on and on and on using all the tactics that he can going bull moves forward thinking he's going to win well one day when it's God's timing God's going to do just exactly what he did here with Hezekiah and this other wicked king he's going to show forth his mighty power he's going to show forth his mighty strength and his mighty deliverance to his people okay so he said who was there among all all the gods of those nations that my fathers utterly destroyed that could deliver his people out of my hand that your God should be able to deliver you out of my hand mocking the fact whoa I tell you when you read this it's a serious serious thing verse 15 now therefore let not Hezekiah deceive you here he is again trying to throw doubt saying that Hezekiah is deceiving them trying to throw all this doubt and lies and whatever you know to turn them away from Hezekiah to turn them away from hearing the word Hezekiah was speaking to them from the Lord and that's the same thing that's happening today the same exact thing but see the Lord prevails the Lord is the one that wins the Lord is the one that has the upper hand the Lord is the one that's the boss And he said, And his servant spake, this wicked enemy's servant spake more against the Lord God. They kept speaking against the Lord God and against his servant Hezekiah. He wrote also letters to rail on the Lord God of Israel and to speak against him, saying, As the gods of the nations of other lands have not delivered their people out of my hand, 
so shall not the God of Hezekiah deliver his people out of my hand. Whoa, he's pretty prideful in the fact, isn't he? Well, we're going to read on down here and show you just what God does about that. Just what God does about that. Then they cried with a loud voice in the Jews' speech unto the people of Jerusalem that were on the wall to affright them, to try to make them afraid, and to trouble them that they might take the city. What is the biggest weapon of the enemy? Fear. If he can get an upper hand on fear, then he's, he's pretty much on the way to winning the battle, doesn't he? That's why the Lord said, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and might and a sound mind. You know, fear is a spirit. Jesus identified it. So we know if fear starts coming in, that's a spirit. That's an evil spirit. And we need to rebuke it and say, Get behind me, you evil, foul, wicked spirit of fear. Be gone. You know, I just love this, what God does. I just love this, what God does. And you know, he's doing it in this hour. He is doing it in this hour. He's showing the enemy who the boss is. And it's not the enemy. It's not the devil. It's not the wicked people he uses. And you know what? He will use anybody. He will use our mother, our father, our sister, our brother, our children. He will use anybody. But see, this is what happens. This is what happens. And it doesn't matter who it is. God will take care of it. God will take care of it. Okay, this guy even wrote letters. He wrote letters to rail on the Lord God of Israel. I'm going to read this again. And to speak against him, saying, As the gods of the nations of other lands have not delivered their people out of mine hand, so shall not the God of Hezekiah deliver his people out of my hand. Then they cried with a loud voice in the Jews' speech unto the people of Jerusalem that were on the wall to affright them to trouble them that they might take the city and they spake against the God of Jerusalem as against the gods of the people of the earth which were the work of the hands of men the wicked have no fear of God and that's why they keep on and do on like they do because they have no fear of God they have no fear of the one that gave them breath and can just as well take it but see, sooner or later, like I said before, if a person does not turn and they continue to be wicked and they continue to come against God and his people, God will take care of it. He will. And their end will be an eternity in hell if they don't repent. That's just the plain and simple fact. And the Lord... Okay, here we go. These guys were doing all this stuff, these wicked people, the enemy. And this is what Hezekiah and God's people did. And for this cause, Hezekiah the king and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, prayed and cried to heaven. They brought supplication and intercession to the God of the universe, the Almighty God. And He heard them. He heard them. And He hears us today when we cry unto Him. When we cry unto Him and we say, How long, Lord? How long are you going to let this go on, Lord? When are you going to take care of this, Father? When are you going to show forth that this is defeated, destroyed, ashes in the ground? When, Lord? They cried unto God, and he heard them. Now, I want to show you our almighty God. And the Lord sent an angel, one angel, one, you know, singular, one angel, which cut off all the mighty men of valor and the leaders and captains in the camp 
of the king of Assyria. So he returned with shame of face to his own land. Shame of face, confusion. Whoa, man, how could this happen? How could I be defeated? Because you're coming up against an almighty God. And you're not going to win, says the Lord. I will send you off with your head hanging down. And then what did he do next? And he didn't wait very long to do it either. So this evil king, this wicked enemy, returned with shame of face to his own land. And then what? And when he was come into the house of his God, they that came forth of his own bells, his own children slew him there with the sword. God is not jacking around. He's very jealous over his people. And like I said before, there is a time. There is a time limit. There is a time limit. And I think we are fast, fast approaching that. Thus saith the Lord, thus the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all other, and guided them on every side. Okay? Now, the Lord is king. I want to tell you right now, child of God, you're going through a warfare right now. The enemy is coming against you through whatever means, through family, professed friends, professed Christians, whatever, whoever. I'm here to tell you today, God has heard. He has seen. He's kept a record. And he's heard your cries too. And he's answering you. And the Lord God will come. He will come. And he will take care of all your enemies. Now I have another thing to say to the enemies of God. And those that are coming against the Lord and his people and his work. You need to repent today. You need to turn from your wicked ways, whoever you are. You need to turn today. Because if you do not turn and you do not repent you are going to be in hell. You will be cut off. And you will be in hell for eternity. And I pray to God that you do turn, that you do repent. And I just want to pray right now for those that are bound by an evil spirit, that have allowed an evil spirit to come in through bitterness or unforgiveness or whatever, and it has literally possessed you. It has literally possessed you, and you are a tormented soul today because of it. I want to pray right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I come against you, you foul, wicked spirit. I command you to be gone. Come out in Jesus' name and be gone in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our God is the victor, yes, our God is the victor. He has victory over all the enemy and over all his plans. Our God is the victor, our God is the victor. He's the victor that sits on the throne. Hallelujah.